Virtual story time. Yes, we are talking about something super delicious this week. We are talking about ice cream. cream. Do you love ice cream? Do you love ice cream? I do. Do you? Yes, I do. Yeah, so we are going to read some cool stories about ice cream and do a really fun puppet show. So sit tight, enjoy, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. I'm going to read for you a story called Splat the Cat ice cream for ice cream. Splat the cat beamed in the back of the bus. His class was on a field trip to the ice cream factory. Would you like to go? I would. I could eat four ice cream cones a day, said Splat. I could eat 15, said Plank. And I could eat all yours and a million more, said Spike. Kitten licked her lips. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream, the friends cried. At the ice cream factory, ice cream swirled in big vats. Pipes steamed, nozzles gleamed. Wow, said Splat, what a dream. The factory manager greeted them. I am Mr. Jellybean, he said. Who wants a tour? Hooray, sang the cats. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Mr. Jellybean led the class to a back room. The cat's faces fell. There was a chalkboard, chairs, desks, but no ice cream to be seen. Mr. Jellybean cleared his throat. <clears throat> First, let's talk freezers, he said. Some are big, some are small. All are extremely cold. Mr. Jellybean talked on and on. He seemed to love his freezer theme, but the cats did not. Their eyes glazed over, their heads drooped. Oh, they look a little bored. Splat began to daydream that he was making ice cream. He closed his eyes. Can you close your eyes? And he leaned against a big red button. Oh no! Beep! Alarms blared, lights beamed, splat, jumped and screamed. Steam puffed out of a big pipe, then splat, ice cream streamed out. It became a huge ice cream wave. Oh my goodness, it grew and grew and it flooded the whole factory. Oh my goodness, these cats are swimming in ice cream. Now that's a lot of ice cream, said Plank, taking a taste. Yum! What, what, what happened? Mrs. Wimpy Dimple asked. I don't know, said Splat from under a pile of chocolate chips. The class cleaned themselves up. Mrs. Wimpy Dimple counted heads. Everyone was there except Seymour, Splat screamed. I have to find Seymour, he said. He ran back to the door. Wait, Kitten cried. We'll come with you. We're a team, after all. Inside, the team checked out the ice creamy mess. Let's look, they said. Be careful, Splat said. Seymour is so small we may not see him underneath all this ice cream. With brushes and buckets, the cats cleaned and ate their way into the factory. Seymour, Splat called. But Seymour was nowhere to be seen. Then the team cleared and ate their way through the next room. Seymour, Splat called again. The team continued until the factory gleamed, but it seemed Seymour wasn't anywhere underneath all that ice cream. Just then, a blob of whipped cream fell onto Splat's head. Splat looked up and there was Seymour. He was up on a beam. He couldn't call out. His mouth was full of ice cream. Seymour leapt into Splat's paws. Then Mr. Jellybean thanked the team. The factory is so clean. How can I repay you? Would you like some ice cream? The cats all groaned. No more ice cream, they said. For now, whispered Seymour. The end. And 
I'm gonna read you a story, an elephant and piggy book called Should I Share My Ice Cream? Ice cream, get your cold ice cream for a hot day. Oh boy, ice cream. One ice cream, please. Here you go. Oh boy, oh boy, I love ice cream. He sure looks like he loves ice cream. Wait, Piggy loves ice cream too. Piggy is my best friend. Should I share my ice cream with her? Hmm, what do you think? Should I share my awesome, yummy, sweet, super great, tasty, nice, cool ice cream? Hmm, hmm, he is doing some thinking. Hmm, he looks like he loves that ice cream. Maybe Piggy does not like this flavor. Sharing a flavor Piggy does not like would be wrong. I will eat the ice cream. Wait, Piggy will like this flavor. It is very yummy. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? I will share my ice cream. It will not be easy. Uh oh, look, it looks like his ice cream is starting to melt a little bit. Hey, Piggy is not here. She does not know I have ice cream. I will eat the ice cream. Where is Piggy? Hmm, I wonder where Piggy actually is. <gasps> what if she is sad somewhere? Oh no. I must find her. When I do, I will say, would you like some of my ice cream? That's a very nice thing to do. Then she will say, thank you, that would cheer me up. Then I will give her my ice cream to share. Yum. Then my best friend will be happy. Oh, I will do it. I will share my, oh no, it splattered on the ground. Ice cream? Oh no, now what? No! Oh, poor elephant. Now Piggy cannot have any of my ice cream. Now I cannot have any of my ice cream. I blew it. Who's coming? You look sad. Would you like some of my ice cream? Thank you. That would cheer me up. <gasps> Yum. Look, they're sharing ice cream and now they're both happy. <gasps> that was not my plan. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh well. This works too. The end. Hello? We have your bear. Oh my, where is he? He is at Cohen's Cones, the ice cream shop. He will not leave. Someone will have to come and take him away. I could hear Larry saying, I think I will have another blueberry sundae. No, no more, I heard someone say. Larry is a polar bear. He lives in our hotel. Once, Larry saved my father's life, and that is why the hotel is called Hotel Larry. Larry is the lifeguard at the hotel pool. I hurried down to the ice cream shop. Mrs. Cohen was the owner of Cohen's Cones. Out of the goodness of my heart, I allowed this bear to sleep in the walk-in freezer. Now I find that he has eaten over 250 pounds of ice cream. I looked at Larry. Please do not worry about me. I feel fine, Larry said. Why would you let him sleep in your freezer? I asked Mrs. Cohen. He said he was warm. 
didn't you think he might eat ice cream? He said we had nothing to fear, Mrs. Cohen said. I think he meant to tell you that he would not eat any people, I said. He won't, you know. Eat people? That's right. I don't see how you can let a bear into your freezer and not expect him to eat ice cream, I said. He ate a lot, Mrs. Cohen said. Well, he's a bear. I suppose... I didn't eat any of the almond crunch, Larry said. Could I have some now, please? No, said Mrs. Cohen. My father will pay for the ice cream, I said. Larry is his very best friend. In that case, you may each have an almond crunch cone, Mrs. Cohen said, but take the bear away. Larry and I walked away from Cohen's cones, licking our almond crunches. It was wrong to eat all that ice cream, I said. I became overheated, Larry said. I only intended to have a nap. I think I ate the ice cream in my sleep. Uh, you continued asking for ice cream when you were awake, I said. Well, yes, Larry said. I saw no harm in it. The customers seemed to think it was cute, and a man came and took my picture. The next day, Larry's picture was in the newspaper. Bear eats one-eighth ton of ice cream, it said above the picture. Under the picture, it said, I do not feel sick, says Bear. Mildred, you know Larry is not supposed to leave the hotel without you, my father said. Mildred was at her karate lesson, Larry said. I became bored. I have paid for the ice cream. We will say no more about it, my father said. A man came to stay at the hotel. He signed his name in the book at the desk, I. Berg. This is the hotel where the polar bear lives, is it not? I. Berg asked. Oh, yes, said my mother. May I see him? I. Berg asked. He is sleeping. He ate a great deal of ice cream yesterday, my mother said, but I'm sure you will see him later. After supper, Mr. Berg approached my father. He gave my father a card that read, I. Berg, Iceberg Ice Cream Company. Are you the bear's owner? Mr. Berg asked my father. Owner? No, he is my friend, my father said. Would it be possible for me to speak to him on a matter of business? He is a wild polar bear and may speak to whomever he likes, but I would like to be present. Of course, said Mr. Berg. Larry and my father and Mr. Berg sat together in the lobby. It is my honor to own the Iceberg Ice Cream Company of Baltimore, Maryland, founded in 1851. You may know our slogan, Iceberg, Iceberg, we all scream for Iceberg. I'm not sure I understand it, Larry said. No, Mr. Berg said, no one seems to. Still, it's a catchy slogan, my father said. Larry, your picture has been copied in newspapers all over the world. People know that you ate half a ton of ice cream at Cone's Cones, but they do not know that it was iceberg ice cream that you ate. It was only one-eighth of a ton, Larry said. Still, it was a lot of ice cream. I was overheated and hungry, Larry said. I am often hungry. I had to pay for it all, my father said. Larry, would you like to come with me to Baltimore, Maryland? I can show you our modern ice cream factory. I will bring you home the very next day. Mr. Berg, I think I would like to go to Baltimore, Maryland, visit a modern ice cream factory, and come home the very next day, more than anything else I can imagine at this moment, Larry said. In the morning, Larry and Mr. Berg went away in a very large car. Larry wore his sunglasses. He took with him a small suitcase containing his bongos and a copy of Moby Dick by Herman Melville. 
The following day, Mr. Berg brought Larry back to the hotel. Did you have a nice time in Baltimore? I asked Larry. I had a very nice time, he replied. Was the modern ice cream factory interesting? I asked. Yes, it was quite modern and very interesting. I learned a great deal, Larry said. Why did Mr. Berg want to show it to you? And what did you learn? And what did you do? I asked. I would prefer to tell you about it at another time, Larry said. You won't tell me now? I would prefer not to. Larry continued to refuse to talk about his visit to Baltimore, Maryland. He said nothing to my father, and nothing to my mother, and nothing to me. Mr. Berg visited Larry a number of times. Larry would sit in a very large car with Mr. Berg, and they would look at sheets of paper and talk to each other. One day, Mr. Berg brought a very large box made of plastic foam. He dragged it into the hotel, then called us to gather around. Behold, Mr. Berg said. He took the lid off of the box. It was full of ice cream bars, each with the picture of Larry on the wrapper. I give you the Larry bars, Mr. Berg said. I am so proud, Larry said. The Larry bars came in many flavors, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, blueberry, arctic almond, bearberry, polar pineapple, and codfish. The codfish was my idea, Larry said. Mr. Berg is not too sure about that one, but I know it will be popular. Mr. Berg unrolled a large poster. It had a picture of Larry holding all the flavors of Larry bars in his paws. At the top, it said, the Larry bar. And at the bottom, it said, I do not feel sick. Our new slogan, Mr. Berg said. The rest is history. Larry bars are loved by everyone. And the codfish flavor Larry bar is considered a gourmet treat. There are posters, signs, and billboards of Larry, and the slogan, I do not feel sick, is known the world over. Larry has appeared on television and received a phone call from the President of the United States. He is a celebrity. He is the spokesbearer for the Iceberg Ice Cream Company. I asked Larry, does Mr. Berg pay you anything for helping him make Larry bars famous? I did not come all the way from Baffin Bay to be a fool, Larry said. Have you seen the walk-in freezer in my room? What's more, I receive 50 Larry bars each day. It sounds like a good deal to me, I said. Oh yes, I am a happy bear, Larry said. The end. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed all those tasty stories in that awesome puppet show about ice cream. That's right. And we have a really cool counting craft for you this week. Uh, so you can pick the materials for that up either in person at the library or call us from the parking lot and we'll bring it out to your car via our curbside service. And the instruction video for that will be up tomorrow morning. So thank you so much for watching. Have a cool week and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.